Hello friends of golfers, welcome back. Today we're gonna to go to work on casting and actually just work on it instead of just talk like I did in the introduction, okay? So I like to use training aids for certain things, okay? So my bar for a training aid is, is it holding you in a position or are you working to get there, okay? So for instance, let's talk about just the trail rest here. And I wanna show you a couple of these I recommend. One of them is from Tour Striker. Shout out to Martin Chuck. George Gangas, shout out to him too. Right here, you get the trail wrist and one for the lead wrist. Um, both of those have discounts on my site, uh, ejsgolf.com slash gear. Go there and you can get a discount on either one of these. I like both of them, um, versatile, okay? So um, I like to use them. And what I don't like is any training aid that forces you into position. So I don't know if folks, if you've seen, let me just use an example of one. Um, I'm going to make this up, but <laughs> there may be one out there like this, but it's something that holds you in a position. Let's say if I get, I want my wrist like this at the top, right? So if there's a training aid that can hold me in this position, artificially hold my hand back like this and hold me while I'm coming down, that's not good. Why is that? So if I have something pushing against me here to help hold me back, guess what I'm actually doing in my mind and brain against that? I'm pushing against it, right? Because something's pushing me this way. What am I going to automatically do? Push this way. Right now, you won't know that because the thing's pushing you back, but there's no reason you're building up any any training neuromuscularity or building any motor patterns to hold your trail wrist back. Right. That's why we want something so simple. And usually what it boils down to folks is simple training aids. Now, like hack motion is something I use a lot. That's a little more expensive. Um, you know, you put that in wrist. We have digital readouts of what your wrist is doing and extension, flexion, ulnar radiator deviation and you know, pronation, supination. Now that's good too, but this is here. Listen, get this click, right? So when I go back, click, and then say I'm a caster, click. So I like that auditory stuff. It's a great way for training. So I just thought I'd throw that out at the very beginning. I would get either one of these to use that you're going to find it very beneficial for your training to have something as a reminder to go there. Now, another one you can use too is one I suggest as well. Um, right here, this is the um, one from uh, um, Sean, Sean Foley, the Pro Sender. This one works good as well because it's the same concept I was just talking to you about of how to use it, um, where we have to, it doesn't force us into any position, but we have an idea of where we want to go. So, see how there's this gap here on this? So, when I hinge back, see that? When I create that trail wrist extension backwards, see my finger will fit right into that. Now, what's key with this is, so there's nothing like the ones I don't like that I would go up and hold me here like this. I have to physically keep my hand here on the way down, not like that, right? So any of you that cast, you would come up here, and let's say you did get in here, right away you'd come out of it. Right away you'd come out of this. So we want to practice feeling it. So it's a it's a device that gives you a sense sensation of something. So this is to feel this of the top that I got into it that I stay in it. Okay. So there's an idea of a few training aids that I would suggest getting one of them. They will help you. And these are, those are all good ones. Your wrist training that we're doing up here is big. So um, I thought we'd do some things today just to start to kind of go over, you know, kind of the basic training that we want to start right away to start getting rid of this, okay? Um, so in the first video, I, number, I know I covered it pretty well, what casting is, but it's basically we get up to the top and we're right away losing our wrist angles, okay? Now there could be several reasons for it. I don't, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if I go way ahead of the ball, then I have to lose it. There, there's a bunch of different reasons and it really doesn't matter why you do it, you do it, okay? You're gonna be the person who, if I'm swinging, this little shortcut <laughs> helps me this way, I don't have as much room in here. If I have a face on a camera like this and I'm shooting a video, right? And let's say I'm, I'm doing a lesson and I look at you and you send me in a video and I look at it and th this is where you'd be, right here. If you're casting, right? I would see this, look right here, look at this huge gap. Somebody who doesn't cast, I would see this. Hands in front of the, in front of the, in front of the right thigh. Still parallel to the ground, okay? So that is where we're gonna start today with that and one other drill, okay? so. I'm gonna start with I want to start with this one. Just get used to this wrist kind of hinging back. Okay, so this is gonna be good for those of you who come over the top as well. Um, we can do this with you know probably driver would be better. It's easier to stand up. Um, let's see here. Let's do this. So this 
So you can you don't have to use a driver. Having a tall club like this is good though. So we want to get into posture, okay? Now I want to come down and put my arm hanging down here, okay? So they kind of hang. Now I'm gonna extend this back. So let's go over this again. Extension is building this, okay? Flexion would be this way, okay? Now on your lead wrist, extension would be this kind of cup, and there's flexion, okay? Extension, flexion. Um, deviation, if I talk about radial deviation, that's the thumb going up, ulnar is going the opposite way. I can't do much in the same with the surgeries I've had on it. Okay, so what I want you to do here is we're gonna go, if there's a ball here, which I'll put a ball here, we'll do it, I'm gonna do it this way first. We're gonna cover the ball, okay? So let's cover the ball drill by going like this, getting hinged, but now I wanna turn it this way. So normally my hand hangs kind of in like this. If I just went up like this, it'd be facing this way. I want you folks to turn it like this so it's facing back, okay? Now I want that kind of over the ball, kind of covering it, maybe a tad bit behind it, depending just kind of how you're hanging, where you have the ball, I have it in the middle. Swing up to the top. I call it waiter position. We're holding a waiter a tray up here. Now, if you notice when I do this, I kind of try to build a little bit of depth here, trail hip. Now, if I were to look down, I have mirrors here and here, so I'm looking at how I'm doing here. Remember, everything I do is based on feedback, okay? I need to know that I'm doing this drill correct. I just I have to know that. If, I, if I'm just sitting there doing it without feedback, either video or mirrors or something with my wrist to know I'm doing it right, then I don't know if I'm doing it correct, and I'm just guessing. So we have to have feedback. So here, I'm up. I'm a waiter at the top. See how wide I am? Get my butt back there. Now... The next move is we're going to come down all the way down to the ball and cover it. This is impact position. I want you to get like this, okay? So let me do it with this, the shorter one, so you can kind of see. But grab a taller club. It just works better. You'll, you'll be in better posture. Put this out in front. So my hand's not just like this. I'm going to turn it this way, okay? And I'm going to go up to the top. Nice big turn. And I'm going to come down and turn and cover over the ball. My hand's over it. Now I want you to look at my impact position here. Club went a little forward. My head should be basically where it started. Hips have cleared out of the way. You see that? This leg's straight now. This knee's kind of in. Kind of rolled over on the side of that foot. Now I can take this foot off the ground. I probably have 80% of my weight on that foot, okay? My lead foot there, okay? So we're working on other things here at the same time. Good. We're working on a nice, good rotation. At the same time, we're doing this, okay? So we're just feeling that wrist. Now, for those of you at CAS, I would suggest if you have one of these training aids, keep that training on so aid on so you know you didn't do that, okay? Now, we're gonna go to uh, drill number two here. Um, I'll show you this way first, okay? So this is gonna be near the same thing, but everything's gonna be all near the same thing because we're really working on this, but it's gonna be with a club, okay? But we're gonna add a couple components to it um, to make sure we're in a good position. Folks, what you're gonna find from this is that all my promises that I've made of impact and everything like that getting better, this is gonna be so much more than that for you folks. I mean, impact is everything, but more than you think, then this is gonna help your game. Just think about what I've already told you. At the same time, we're already working on a good rotation. So if you had one that goes like this, think about that drill as I did this, where you go over the top. You would come here and you go like that, you'd hit it. Now, if I'm looking in the mirror watching it, look how my hand comes back down. This path, the same path right here, just basically a little bit into out instead of this, okay? So we're working on several. I always like to add in a bunch of different things at the same time, so we're really getting it, okay? Um, now, this next one we're doing with a little club. I think I'll do it with my longer one here first, show you this way. Okay, so this is, we're going to go up to the top, um, and this is like my, I do, I call this the P4 to P5 to P6 to impact, which is P7, okay? So, just make sure I have this lined up and meter right with me. Okay, now we're just gonna go from here, and I just want you folks to get up to the top. Now, one of our goals of getting up to the top is getting this wrist hinged. I can't have you up at the top like this, okay? So if you have a grip that's really weak or in your palm like that, that doesn't allow you, you're just like this, and it won't, your wrist won't even hinge up, watch my videos on grip, okay? We need to get this meaty part right there on top in this more in the fingers, okay? So we have, we can really crank this thing down. We can rotate this a lot. If you can't do this with the club with your grip on it, and you have one of these grips that you can just go like this with it, you're not gonna be able to do this because we need to learn to twist this club, okay? One of the reasons you may be flipping or casting, well, and flipping, is because your grip is so bad on the side that you can't turn this club if you wanted. It's the only way for you to close it, okay? So, one of the main 
tests of the backswing is what? I heard you guys. This hinge. We're, way, we're up here at the top. Waiter, get these hands far away from us, right? So I'm there, boom. This is called P4, position four. It's top of my swing, okay? P5 would be arm parallel. P6 is club parallel. P7 is impact, okay? So I'm here, okay? We're gonna come to the next spot. This is arm parallel to the ground, right? At this point, I have not lost my wrist hinge at all. It's the same as it was up here. Notice that? Okay, now, I have to be really clear about something. And it'll show up right here, okay? So I can hear. Now we're gonna go down to the next point. This is arm parallel, where we get down to P6. Okay, see this club going through my forearm right there nicely? P6, okay, now, I want you to see this right here. I am, well, I'll show you from the other side of this angle right now. This club, had, this club is a little bit behind. Notice it's behind my hands, barely. The toe is down and not open, not like this, right? This toe is down and look at my hand, but the grip on to be pointing that way. And I'm just barely behind this. So it's parallel to the ground. This is here, toes there, and I'm right across from my knee, or I mean my right uh, thigh, okay? So there's a lot to this one, folks. And if you're having a problem coming down and you get to the top and you have this wrist severely cupped, you're gonna pay real attention to this and probably watch my motorcycle um, video on the motorcycle drill to close this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyways. This is a big video, this covers a lot, folks, okay? So, we're at the top. We're coming down, P4. Look at my body moving, folks. I never just do arms. Body's moving, right? Now you saw this was kind of going through my forearm. Now we come down here, club parallel. See, I'm in front of my right thigh. Toe is kind of turned down. See that? From there, look how I can go down to impact like that. That's what we want, okay? So now, for those of you who get to the top and there's more of this cup, in your wrist, lead wrist, look where the club is pointing down to the ground. See that? That means your, your club is wide open. The more you have this like this, toe point the ground, the more you have to close the club on the way down. So either you throw it like this, or you learn to close it by turning the shaft, okay? So I want you to learn how to do this move here, folks. We are, in order to close this club face, we have to learn to turn the shaft. If I'm right here, this is how I close club face. Not like this anymore. That's not how we do it. So if I'm at the top, right, I'm gonna have a little cup in it to show you. Look how I get rid of it there. And then I can get here and see how it's turned down. It's a big one I want you to practice this week, folks. A huge one, okay? We're gonna get to here, P4, get down to arm parallel, okay? Now, we're coming down to P6, forearm P6, see now, it's barely behind my hands and see the toe is turned down. It kind of matches my back angle. That's P6. Now impact is like this. Hands hands ahead of it and boom. I, I would prefer actually, if you didn't have a ball there that we landed a little bit in front of the ball so we know what it's like to hit low point, okay? So folks, when you're here, if you have this cup in it, you have to learn to turn your wrist like this to close it. Do you see how it's, look at the club face. Okay, so if I have it here in a massive cup, look at, this is where most of you guys are coming down. I need to close this on the way down. I need to start from the very top and close it so I'm here. I can't be like this, because if I come down like this, the body knows the only way to hit it is like this. Otherwise, if I want shaft lean, look what's gonna happen. So for fixing your casting, guess what you get? Shaft lean, <laughs> right? It's the trade-off, it's a beautiful trade-off, right? But you'll never get that even if you fix this casting because if you come down like this with this say you're right here it's just club wide open you will never come in like this because you'll blow it way to the right what you'll do is you'll go like this with a wide open you'll stop your body and go like that and throw the club and the, once again it'll be behind your hands or whatever okay so up here get rid of that cup on the way down so your wrist is more flat and when you get down to p6 this thing's turned down Okay, so I want to see you folks all getting right here, P6 in front of your thigh, this toe turned down. That's a lot different look than where most of you are from cast, where you see this massive gap right here between you. See that massive gap, this club's wide open, and then you have to just throw it from there. Body stops and throw. What we're gonna get to do is just do this awesome turning the whole time, because the antidote to this club closed like this, or not closed, but just not open, is rotation like that. The antidote to this wide open club face is this, the body stopping, okay? 
I know that was a lot, folks, but practice that. Watch this video again and again and again. Why do I say that? So you can see me? No, I know I'm not that pleasant to look at, but I do know this. The most successful students that I have watch my videos more, at least the drill part of it or whatever, because they want to see, do I match up to what he's doing? What exactly is he doing right there with his hands? Not just creating something on their own, okay? How is, what is that? What is his wrist doing on the way down? How does he get like that? What is the motorcycle move? Motorcycle move is this to close the club face. And if you need to read more on that, check out my uh, YouTube or Instagram and uh, you'll find more on the motorcycle move, okay? But it's just twisting here, okay? All right, folks, look forward to seeing you soon. If you have any questions, please let me know. Eric Schulberg, EJS Golf Academy, casting.